Chapter 10 of Nutcracker and Mouse King by E.T.A. Hoffman. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Uncle and Nephew. If any one of my good readers has ever had the misfortune to cut himself with glass, he knows how it hurts and how long a time it takes to heal. Whenever Maria tried to get up, she felt very dizzy and so it continued for a whole week, during which time she was obliged to remain in bed. But at last she became entirely well, and could play about the chamber as merrily as ever. Everything in the glass case looked prettily, for the trees, flowers and houses, and beautiful puppets stood there as new and bright as ever. But best of all, Maria found her dear Nutcracker again. He stood on the second shelf and smiled upon her with a good, sound set of teeth. In the midst of all the pleasure which she felt in gazing at her favourite, a pang went through her heart when she thought that Godfather Drosselmeyer's story had been nothing else but the history of the Nutcracker and of his quarrel with Lady Mouserings and her son. She knew well enough that her nutcracker could be none other than the young Drosselmeyer of Nuremberg, Godfather Drosselmeyer's agreeable, but now, alas, enchanted nephew. For that the skilful watchmaker at the court of Pearly Pat's father was the counsellor Drosselmeyer himself. She did not doubt for an instant, even while he was telling the story. But why was it that your uncle did not help you? Why did he not help you? complained Maria, as it became clearer and clearer to her mind, that in that battle which she saw, Nutcracker's crown and kingdom were at stake. Were not all the other puppets subject to him? And is it not plain that the prophecy of the astronomer has been fulfilled, and that young Drosselmeyer is prince and king of the puppets? While the shrewd Maria explained and arranged all this so well in her mind, she believed, since she had seen Nutcracker and his vassals in life and motion, that they actually did live and move. But that was not so. Everything in the glass case remained stiff and lifeless. Yet Maria, far from giving up her conviction, cast all the blame upon the magic of Lady Mouserings and her seven-headed son. But if you are not able to move or to talk to me, dear Master Drosselmeyer, she said aloud to the Nutcracker, yet I know well enough that you understand me and know what a good friend I am to you. You may depend upon my help, and I will beg of your uncle to bring his skill to your assistance whenever you have need of it. Nutcracker remained still and motionless, but it seemed to Maria as if a gentle sigh was breathed in the glass case, so that the panes trembled, scarce audibly indeed, but with a strange sweet tone and a voice rang out like a little bell. Maria, mine, I'll be thine, and thou mine, Maria, mine. Maria felt, in the cold shuddering that crept over her, a singular pleasure. Twilight had come on. The doctor, with Godfather Drosselmeyer, entered the sitting room, and it was not long before Louise had arranged the tea-table, and all sat around, talking cheerfully of various things. Maria had very quietly taken her little armchair, and seated herself close at Godfather Drosselmeyer's feet. During a moment when they were all silent, she looked up with her large blue eyes in the counsellor's face and said, I know, dear Godfather Drosselmeyer, that my nutcracker is your nephew, the young Drosselmeyer of Nuremberg, and he has become a prince, or king rather, as your companion, the astronomer, foretold. All has turned out exactly so, 
you know now that he is at war with the son of Lady Mouserings, with the hateful Mouse King. Why do you not help him? Maria then related the whole course of the battle, just as she had seen it, and was often interrupted by the loud laughter of her mother and Louise. Fred and Drosselmeyer only remained serious. Where does the child get all this strange stuff in her head? said the doctor. She has a lively imagination, replied the mother. In fact, they are nothing but dreams caused by her violent fever. That story is not true, said Fred. My red hussars are not such cowards as that. If I thought so, swords and daggers, I would make a stir among them. But Godfather Drosselmeyer, with a strange smile, took little Maria upon his lap and said in a softer tone than he was ever heard to speak in before, Ah, dear Maria, more power is given to thee than to me or to the rest of us. Thou, like Pearlypat, art a princess born, for thou dost reign in a bright and beautiful kingdom. But thou hast much to suffer, if thou wouldst take the part of the poor, misshapen nutcracker. For the Mouse King watches for him at every hole and corner. I cannot. Thou, thou alone canst rescue him. Be firm and true. Neither Maria nor any one else knew what Drosselmeyer meant by these words and they appeared so singular to Dr. Stahlbaum that he felt the counsellor's pulse and said, Worthy friend, you have some violent congestion about the head. I will prescribe something for you. But the mother shook her head thoughtfully and spoke. I feel what it is that the counsellor means, but I cannot express it in words. End of chapter 10